like to lead you through a contemplation of 16 steps. And you can keep your eyes open because we'll be guided as much by images as by words. Consider the proposition that we have always lived on earth and will always live on earth. Even before we were born, we were earthlings and we will remain earthlings after we die. In the early days of our souls, We lived, moved, and had our being within the angelic body of Earth, Earth's vast soul. We were lights, and Earth was the light that encompassed us. Earth was in the keeping of the spiritual sun. The universal soul. And ultimately, the light of all lights, the one being. In later days, we found ourselves within the imaginal body of Earth, Earth's capacious mind. We were dream figures, and Earth was the dreamscape we inhabited. The sun poured visionary rays onto earth. The universal mind overlit her and the light of lights was her eternal source. At last, we found ourselves within the physical body of Earth, Earth's hard core. We are bodies among bodies. And Earth is the great body of which our substance is formed. Our eyes brim with sunshine, the stars overhead are the multitudinous particles of the universal body. And the light of lights is here too, the essence of all.
on reaching the body of earth. As infants, we remained in a triple world, a world of soul, mind, and body. But before long, forgetfulness set in. The soul of earth disappeared first, then her mind. Only her body remained. And what is a body without soul or mind? She still possesses a soul and a mind, but how many perceive them? Simultaneously, we've forgotten our own souls. They seem to have floated away to a faraway place. We've retained our minds, but these are now minds unmoored from the mind of the earth. uprooted from their psychic soil. Our minds and hearts ache or go numb. Our bodies share in the estrangement. The birds singing at dawn remain in the Garden of Eden. Their downy chests breast the fresh breeze of morning. Their thoughts fly in the sky of Earth's sacred dream. Their souls stand where their claws perch. Sometimes the veil is lifted and we join in the rapture of the flying ones, the swimming ones, the burrowing ones, and the green growing ones. There are times when the setting sun pierces us through to the soul There are moments when we witness a blaze of emerald fire in the eyes of an elusive fox, or the age-old water of life gushes up before our eyes in the limbs of a hoary oak or in a new-sprung shoot of mint. Science is 
disclosing new wonders with each passing day. Every cell in our body we're learning is a teeming city. And every atom is an intrepid traveler between lands. The vastness in which our planet swims shimmers with the light of swirling galaxies, numbered in the scores of billions, each bursting with scores of billions of stars. Here on Earth, science is tracking the markers of an unraveling planet, melting glaciers, warming oceans, burning forests, widening deserts, blanching coral reefs, and species vanishing in breathless succession. The forensics of the catastrophe reveal our human footprint in every desecrated niche. The need for a conscientious energy paradigm is clear and a wise and benevolent agriculture. How can the days of clear cut forests, strip mined hills, oil spills, belching smokestacks, toxic runoff, depleted soils and dust bowls be suffered to continue when another way is possible. Each of us has choices to make in this one mortal life that is our own. Fundamentally, we have the choice to resign ourselves to negligence and sleepwalk through our days or to wipe the sleep from our eyes and look a new to look with fresh vision is to behold 
the life cycle of everything we use and everything we see. From the womb from which it emerged to the tomb that will return its body to the elements. It means witnessing the interconnectedness between all forms and beings and never imagining that anything exists in isolation. The whole discloses itself in the part and the part shines out from the whole. Paradise is a garden, a place where the human touch does not wither earth, but instead enlivens her. In paradise, human beings, other animals, and all manner of plants, fungi, and minerals live in dynamic reciprocity amidst crystal flowing streams. The divine love circulates in the glances of all beings and all creatures walk gently on God's green earth. There is a path to paradise. Its ways are the ways of glorification, ecstatic glorification and humble service. Every fellow creature we have ever known and every particle of creation we have yet to know is our companion in the journey. The road to paradise does not lead beyond this earth. It leads to her soul and back again. <laughs>